Good morning. My name is Nate, and I miss seeing all of you in person. Isn't it interesting that 2020 was supposed to be the year of clear vision, and yet something as momentous as COVID was not seen coming? Or is COVID an avenue to seeing more clearly and more vividly the mystery of life, an infinite and unimaginable explosion of creativity? Today, I would like to talk about depression and gratitude. The founding master said, just as the weather is sometimes fine and sometimes gloomy, so too is a human being's spiritual energy, sometimes refreshed and sometimes melancholy, and the surrounding sensory conditions also sometimes favorable and sometimes unfavorable. These are natural changes in accordance with the principle of cause and effect. This is that time of year when the days get darker and perhaps gloomier. For some of us, the holidays evoke the absence of loved ones who are no longer on this earth and sadness over the loved ones we are not able to see in this time of isolating. These losses can cause melancholy and a heaviness of spirit. How are we to cope with this heaviness? Some time ago, Reverend Wong Gong suggested I give a talk about depression and gratitude. Perhaps because I've experienced depression myself, perhaps because I treated it as a psychiatrist, or perhaps because she's noticed some shift in me over the eight years I've been practicing here. I have heard this depression described as a loss not mourned. Is depression perhaps a defense against feeling the sadness that dwells inside such losses as those we are experiencing now, a muffling of the sorrow. But is it, is it possible to actually feel grateful for depression? Why would I even want to be grateful for it? Don't I just want to get rid of it? Isn't that the most reasonable goal, to get rid of it? Could it be that moodiness or depression is my deeper self trying to show me something, trying to get my attention? After so many years and decades of not paying attention, is it now time to listen to what these moods may be trying to tell me? I certainly did not come to the temple with the idea that it might be a salve for depression. Quite the contrary. One of the biggest disagreements I ever had with Wong Gong was her suggestion that spiritual practice could bring resolution to those struggling with depression. At the time, I thought that was misguided, perhaps even self-indulgent. The ministers in the rural community where I practice psychiatry did not claim to make the blind to see, the lame to walk, or the deaf to hear but they were pretty sure they could heal depression and that resorting to seeing a psychiatrist was a failure of faith. Now, however, I can accept that Wong Gong may have had it right since my perspective on my own moodiness has been radically altered and for this I will be forever grateful. So how did this change come about? First, I will say it came about gradually and not without resistance. I was pretty set on being right that I was an indelibly moody person. It was just the way I was wired, my neurobiology, my heredity, my cross to bear. One morning a few years ago, Reverend Wong Gong sensed something had been bothering me and asked me what it was. I told her that after years of abstinence, I was considering having a girlfriend. After listening to my sad tale for a few minutes, well, maybe one minute, Wong Gong implied that girlfriends might come under the category of 
unnecessary suffering. But she could see I was in depress, distress, and she said, Nay, we just want you to be happy. That landed with a resounding thump. I knew that to be the simple truth. Although Wang Gong also wants me to trim the hedges, even more than that, she wants me to be happy and free. I have no doubt that is what our reverends want for all of you, too. I know this to be the case for all of Wan Buddhism. Wan Buddhism has its scriptures and its standards its precepts and practices, but its greatest hope and prayer is for all beings everywhere to be happy and free. So if depression is seen as the veiling of happiness, why would it not be their prayer for all beings struggling with depression or moodiness or any form of unhappiness to find their way home? What do I mean when I say home? Have you noticed the word we use for the absence of happiness is unhappiness? But we don't say the reverse, defining happiness as unsadness or undepression. I think there is a clue here that happiness is my original state, my true nature, and that unhappiness is a movement away from my original state, a warning light that I'm coming out of alignment with my true nature. It is now my experience that happiness is not a mood that comes and goes, something that alternates with sadness or anger or depression. It is what is always there in the background, its presence revealed when a mood or coloration of myself subsides, revealing my innate, ever-present happiness. That is what I'm calling home. From this perspective, and now from my lived experience, moodiness in general is not some form of affliction, something visited upon me from a troubled world, something caused by challenging circumstances, childhood trauma, personal predisposition, or genetics. Not that these can't play a role and are not factors to be considered, they just cease to be the most useful explanation for my moodiness. The scriptures say, through awareness of grace and requital of grace, we put gratitude into practice. Even if there is a situation in which we might become resentful, we respond gratefully by recognizing first and foremost that from which all grace derives and giving thanks for any situation. Grace and gratitude. For me, moodiness is no longer a fall from grace. It is grace itself. No longer a signal to look outward into the world for causes and solutions, though that is still my first reflexive response. But instead, the moodiness is a call to look inward, or perhaps more accurately, to stop looking altogether. Stop looking for answers or explanations for my moodiness, something or someone to blame. To stop struggling for understanding or even looking for happiness. Now my moodiness is recognized as a signal to be still and allow whatever is, whatever is arising to be as it is with no resistance, no fear, no resentment, and most importantly, no desire to get rid of it. Just gratitude for this amazing opportunity, which has been precisely and personally tailored by me and for me to show me the way home. Just another opportunity to learn that this moodiness which I've avoided and despaired all my life, was always and only a gentle reminder from my deepest self to call off the search and come home, home to the serenity of simply B.
being. All those years searching for happiness in this and that, when myself already and always was what my heart desired. As the scriptures said, recognizing first and foremost that from which all grace derives, which is myself, and giving thanks for any situation. I'd like to close with a poem from a friend. I see beauty swimming in a sea of grace. I see God upon your face. I see beauty fill every space between you and me. Thank you for this opportunity to speak to you.